talk about thy kingdom come. We are basing this message around, or this first series of messages around, what is called often the Lord's Prayer. But what I know it to be, or more specifically, it is the model prayer that Jesus gave for us to have a framework for our prayer life. And so this was not his prayer. His prayer was in John, the 15th chapter, the prayer that he prayed on his way to Calvary. Uh, but this was a prayer he identified as a model or a framework for his disciples to pattern after once they said, teach us how to pray. Now, it is important that you take this serious because it gives us a foundation, a framework, a skeleton upon which we can build our prayer life. It is not an all-inclusive prayer life, but it builds the framework. And so then you can, in your own development, build around that framework, but at least you have an anchor, a position, a place, a framework to start. And if you pray along, around, and with this framework, you can pray in confidence because you're praying exactly like he told you to pray. If you follow his roadmap, you ought to believe by faith you can get results. Because a lot of the prayers we pray, we pray out of our emotions, we pray out of our feelings, we pray out of our circumstances. But Jesus gave us a prayer that we can pray and build for effectiveness. And I don't know about you, I don't want to be praying for nothing. I don't know who I'm talking to. I, I don't want to be praying for nothing. And so you need to like and share. You need to reach out to your friends right now. Take that anointed finger and hit like and share because somebody getting ready to get blessed. Somebody's life is getting ready to get changed. And so he begins here uh, with what we consider the Lord's Prayer or the Lord's model prayer for the believer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name, thy kingdom come. That's our theme this year. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt towards. We should never pray without a sense or a segment of what? Forgiveness. Uh, not only forgiveness asking for forgiveness, but giving forgiveness. Uh, uh, you can't hold negativity in your heart and hatred and all kinds of mess in your heart when you're praying daily, forgive me as I forgive those that have trespassed or uh, indebted to me. Uh, to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory not sometimes, forever, and then he closes with amen. Can somebody say amen? Our Father, which art in heaven. Jesus gives us, or his disciples, a model for how we should pray and relate to God as our heavenly Father. That's very important. You should always address God. More than just my God or, or more than just some uh, great name that we come up with. He is related to and exposed to us for the very first time in the New Testament as our heavenly father. In the Old Testament, God has revealed himself in ways that share with his attributes. But do not extend to the level of intimacy in our relationship from the standpoint of our father remember it is clear in the old testament that god is a god of covenant he is jehovah jireh our provider jehovah nissi our banner jehovah rapha our healer jehovah shema in his presence jehovah sit canoe my righteousness jehovah shalom my peace all of which show us what he can do for us or attributes of his nature but it does not reveal who he is to us. The issue of family, children, and the father are New Testament issues because of the birth of Christ 
and the new birth of those who accept Christ as Savior. Notice when we, when, we, when we looked at the Old Testament, the closest we could get to Father or the Jews could get to Father was Father Abraham. But they never represented God as their heavenly father. He, they represented his attributes. And, and, and many people know uh, in the true uh, Hebrew context that it was almost a sin to even try to mention God's name. They would talk about his attributes, but they were very cautious about how they said his name. Pod be of that first sentence, hallowed be thy name. You didn't just open your mouth and say God's name. They would talk about his attributes, but they were very cautious about ever trying to pronounce his name, which is Yahweh. I'm not going to go there today, but I just want you to understand that they did not know him by a name that identified him as in a relationship with us. The issue of family, children, and the father are New Testament issues because of the birth of Christ and the new birth of those that accept Christ as Savior. This is the first time that God has been revealed to us as our heavenly father rather than some characteristic of God. We find out that God is relational. All of a sudden, we no longer see God as this big uh, bearded person sitting on the throne ready to strike you down and throw a thunderbolt and blow you up and curse you and dog you out or treat you like you're some robot or some herd of cattle or some animal in the field. We begin to see through this lens that he has become relational, that we can touch God and God can actually touch us. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, It's one thing to get a dream of God. It's another thing to think you had a vision of God. It's another thing that Moses got in the presence of God to the point where he could see God's hinder parts. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. But it's another thing to know God in this deep, intimate relationship. Uh, If God is relational, oh, I love this piece right here. Uh, If God is relational, then we are redeemable. Oh, my God. You can can kill a cow. You can get rid of beasts in the field. You you can get rid of uh, things that are not relational. But when it comes to uh, the fact that God is relational with us, that means we are redeemable. Can somebody say, we are redeemable. Uh, No matter how bad you've been, how good you've been, how right or wrong you've been, the good news of the gospel is that we are all redeemable. We can now see ourselves as children of God rather than subjects of God. That's good news. Somebody shout good news. We can see ourselves as his children rather than his subjects. Notice that as long as he is king, we're his subjects. But when he becomes flesh, we become his children. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which means he has a father. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And that he redeemed the world through his son that we might have life eternal. Notice Jesus did not say, I love this piece right here. Uh, y'all, don't, y'all don't miss it if you don't watch it. He says, not my father but he says when you pray you pray our father that means not only was he the son but God's intention to us was not to have our only son but many sons and daughters in other words he is inclusive thank God he includes us in his plan thank God he has not left us out of his plan and even though the enemy would make us feel like foreigners and bastards and outcasts God God makes it clear that we are our father's children. This is why he says, our father, which is in heaven. Jesus came to reclassify us. Yes, all of us have to know we've been reclassified. We've been put in a whole nother 
category. We were uh, uh, servants of sin. We were downtrodden uh, by the curse of sin. But Jesus came to upgrade us. He came to reclassify us. He came to raise our standing in the earth that we'll be no longer servants but sons and daughters instead. He came to give us an upgrade to his class of existence and raise us to his status. The challenge becomes relating to God as father based on our own understanding of our earthly father. I need to slow down because many of us look at God through the lens of natural human beings. This is why uh, Jesus had to come and shed a new light on who God is because many of us can't relate to God as our heavenly father because we got problems with our earthly father. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And when you try to look at God through the lens of your earthly father, you're going to have issues with God. Because you're going to see God through a tainted lens. Why? Because your earthly father is human. Your earthly father will make mistakes. Your earthly father has proclivities and issues and things that he has to deal with. Wounds and faults and failures. And so if you're trying to look at God through the human father, then you're going to misrepresent your relationship with God. Therefore, Jesus comes to relate us to God as Heavenly Father. Now, you don't want to miss next week because we're going to go back and talk about God's model of a father rather than our own ideals of a father because many of us got some screwed up ideals of what a father is. I'm going to help you. Uh, I know what a father, no you don't because you don't know until you see the authentic model and prototype of what a father is. And so you can't, you can't determine what a father is and the attributes of a father unless you understand Father God. That's why Jesus came to introduce him as our father, which is in heaven. So uh, I'm going to leave that alone. That's for next week. You don't want to miss that, especially you that got issues, daddy issues. Uh -huh. Those of you that got father issues, those that feel like you you got the wrong end of the deal and your daddy is this and your dad. I got something for you next week. Come on, see me. Matthew 9, 7, 9 says, oh, what man? Is there of you whom, if his son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for fish, would give him a servant? If you then, being evil, uh huh, will give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? That changes the whole, watch this now, it changes the whole dynamic. If I see him as Daddy God, if I see him as Father God, then I can approach him with a new confidence. Y'all ain't talking to me. I can approach him with a new level of faith because I'm not going to somebody like a Coke machine I'm going to somebody who has a relationship with me and I have confidence that my father is going to take care of me. I, I got confidence that my father is not going to leave me as prey to the hands of the enemy. I got confidence that my daddy will supply my needs and that he is a God that if I would give my children the best I can, guess what? How much more will God give to his children? Can I tell you something for next week? This is a prelude because I can't wait to get to next week, but I had to start here. But I can't wait to get to next week because many of us want a father, but we don't want to be kids. Okay. Uh, you can't have a father if you're not willing to be a child. Okay, let me get on here. It is not just important that God be our father. We should acknowledge that he is our father and we are indeed his children. It's not enough to think it. It's not enough to hear somebody else say, you got to know for yourself that God is your heavenly father. Father, you ought to talk to him like he's your daddy. You ought to have a conversation, my father. Not, oh God, thou that sitteth in the heavens far above the heavens and the earth, he that made the seas and the that don't mean nothing if I'm a bastard. But if he is my father, 
Oh, y'all not here. If he's my father, it doesn't matter what's going on down here. My father will take good care of me until we embrace him as father. I wish I could preach this today. Uh, until we embrace him as father God for real and still we start looking at him as daddy God, as we start looking at him as a good father, as we start looking at him as the prototype of what a father is, we're going to have problems. We, in other words, we have to embrace him and until we embrace him from that perspective, we cannot approach him with the faith necessary to believe that the relationship Relationship is one of protection, love, caring, provision, and blessing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, this is the problem. This is the problem. Your faith is affected by how you think about God. If you think about God a certain way, your faith is automatically uh, derailed because if you don't see him right, you can't believe him right. Oh, no, y'all, if you don't, if you have a, then that's why you got to get over your daddy issues. Because if you're trying to see God out of a wounded spirit, you will never have the faith that believe that the God that made your daddy did not make a mistake. God, uh, y'all, 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 if you don't see him like you need to see him, it would affect your faith. In other words, you're trying to believe God. But if I can't see him properly, if I got a problem with him, if there's a way between me and my heavenly father based on what somebody in the earth did it will block your blessing that's why you got to be careful not to let your daddy issues and your father issues y'all not hearing me block your uh, idea and sense of who God is in your life because guess what you will allow your earthly challenges to affect your divine blessing Lord have mercy you you can't afford it that's why I tell people you crazy to hold arts in your heart you crazy to hold anger in your heart. I don't care if your daddy was a piece of junk. It's crazy for you to hold that in your heart because it affects your ability to see God from the proper perspective. And you mad with a daddy that you don't even, you don't even know what his issues was. You don't know what his pain was. You don't know what he went through to get you where you were. You don't have an idea why because most of the time, Daddies do not reveal. Y'all not hear me. Most of the time, a real man don't cry. A real man don't sit there and belly and tell you, oh, he, he hit me. And, and, he, no, a real man, most of the time, will suck it up and make the best out of it and keep moving and do the best he can. He don't whine and cry and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh. no, no. A real man understands it takes a man to understand a man. And I don't understand why we can't understand men when we are men ourselves. Oh, y'all ain't. I, I don't understand uh, uh, because, because the reality of it is that our, our impression of God uh, uh, will be affected by the lenses through which we see our own fathers. Uh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. If your father was absent, you will have a tendency to think that God is absent. But what did he say? I'll never Never leave you. No, what did Father God say? Father God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So with God, you can't have abandonment issues. <laughs> oh, come on here. Uh, you know, you see, all these issues we got, we got them because we want them. Everybody in here know that been raised and had a, even had a halfway decent father in your house knew, guess what, that they were flawed. You knew that they had issues, but guess what? It was not his issues that messed you up. It was the lack of your respect. Mm. See, we want to blame the fathers for not being who they need to be, but we never blame ourselves for the disrespect and the disregard and the disdain. Oh, y'all ain't gonna hear me. When he said, honor, your f he won't plan. It's, see, your job is to honor. Your job is to respect. Y'all ain't hear me. You can't, you, you can't control what they did, good or bad, but you can control your posture. 
and your position. My God. He didn't say, I'm going to deal with the father. He said, I'm going to deal with you. He said, honor your father. Y'all know, am I talking good? He said, honor your father. And so therefore, in your experience in life, you need to release your earthly father and hang on to your heavenly father. Come on, somebody. You got to forgive your earthly father and build a real relationship with your heavenly father. Because guess what? You might be a father one day and you're going to find out what goes around comes around. Oh, y'all not here. You're going to find out you ain't been the best father. You, you're going to find out you done had some issues that affected your children. Oh, y'all, it's always easy to throw the uh, mud at somebody else, but this kind of mud don't stick because eventually it's going to boomerang and come back on you. That's why you have to listen, listen. I learned a long time ago. My father was not a loving father in the sense that most people think a father is nurturing and holding your hands and doing all that stuff but he was the, he had the attributes of a father and at the end of the day I, I had to come to grips with uh, that uh, like uh, the prayer says if, if I want to be forgiven for my issues as a father I'm going to have to forgive him y'all ain't going to how you going to hold him because when you hold him uh, accountable then you holding yourself hostage and you're making excuses for the mess that you're going to do in life and it's always going to be the blame game. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh-huh. You're going to always play that blame game. Yeah, if this was that and this was that and this is that. Well, guess what? You're going to have your own one day. Let's see what you say when they start pointing that same finger at you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know I'm preaching good. Those of you, it's quiet in here, but those of you online ought to just say amen. Because at the end of the day, what, you had, what I had to understand, my job was not to agree with everything he said. My job there was not to uh, approve of everything he did. My job was not to point out his weaknesses and his failures. My job was to cover him. My job was to honor him. My job was to respect him. My job was to shut my mouth and show him the respect that he deserves as my father. I don't care what your father was. It was his seed that got you here. If he didn't do nothing else but get your hind parts here, he already got enough. Why? Because now he gave you life. Now you got to live that life. Y'all ain't hearing me. My father was a bum. Well, you came from a bum seed. Are you going to still be a bum? Or are you going to get up and do something with the life he gave you? Oh, you can't live his life for him, but you can live the life that he gave you. And if he ain't no good, he gave you his sperm. And if you beautiful, it was your no good daddy sperm that made a beautiful human being. Him and your mama together. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. If he was a low down drug addict, tore up from the floor up and couldn't take care of himself, he had enough energy. Uh, he must have been good at some point. He got with your mama. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, you ought to be careful how you talk about a no good daddy because it was a no good mama that laid down with him. He couldn't have made the baby by himself. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this series. You always want to point the finger what you didn't get. And you so busy talking about what you didn't get, you ain't giving nothing. Why? Because your job is to honor God's word. And God know how to take care of everything else. He didn't tell you to fix it. He didn't tell you to know everything. He didn't tell you you was in charge. He didn't tell you to rebel. He didn't tell you to act a fool. He didn't tell you to go out and be loose and act like you was crazy because you had daddy issues. He told you to trust in the Lord and lean not to, to your own understanding. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. That's what he told you to do. 
Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh. I got to go. My God, I got to go in here. Furthermore, we've had fathers after our flesh would corrected us. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I don't know one father that does not have the right to correct his children because he is perfect. He corrects you because he's the father. Oh, y'all ain't here. Mama, where you doing is shut your mouth. You ain't the mama. And when you start paying bills and you raise them not a head kids you gonna have then you can be the boss but guess what right now I run this I run all of this up in here up in here with all of my flaws with all of my faults with what you don't like what I like I'm paying the bills I pay for the gas so guess what you don't have a right to stand in contempt with somebody that's taking care of your hind parts don't let me get there oh lord I, I almost got to speak it in tongues don't don't let don't don't start that it's it's something thou that bothers me that we are living in a world of these little rudy these little disrespectful these little arrogant uh, these little think they know it all uh, this little entitled generation uh, and that will that think they have the capacity to dictate to you what it is that goes on in the stuff you pay for i got a problem i got a problem you can't even buy a pair of pants uh, and you telling me what to do with mine i got a problem you ain't paying no bills but you mad because you can't run up my big phone bill i got a problem and on top of that, you walking around with my phone in your pocket and won't even answer when I call you. The devil is a lie. You ought to take it and throw it in the ocean somewhere and tell him to go get a paper cup and talk through that like we used to do. Put the string on both ends of your community. I got to go in here alone. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live this is the question do we will we still in our rebellion use that an excuse to not obey the father who is the father of spirits and live he he says what do you want to live do you want to live the abundant life do you want to be blessed how much more should you listen and submit yourself in obedience to the father of spirits and live it is important to know that we he his father he is the father of spirits which we are he preserves our body for the benefit of his will executed on earth Uh uh-huh we are born again not of a corruptible seed but by uh, incorruptible by the word of god first peter 1 23 says being born again i've been born again wave at somebody says i've been born again i've been born of an incorruptible seed i've been born by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever the same spirit i got to talk to y'all today the same spirit that overshadowed mary i'm glad that the spirit of god overshadowed mary but it didn't have no effect until he overshadowed me i got to tell you i'm glad what he did with mary but i'm so glad he got a hold of me i don't know who i'm talking to in here when she was pregnated with jesus it is the same spirit that came over us uh, y'all ain't talking to me you just don't know you just didn't go to the altar and say words when you confess your faith then the spirit of God overshadowed you and impregnated you and put his sperm put his seed into your spirit oh yeah it was a private matter because whenever you're distributing sperm you don't do that in public you do that in private whenever you're trying to make a baby you don't do it where everybody can see it you go behind closed doors if you got any sense and you make the baby that's why when you come to the altar it ain't everybody's business what happened in that moment y'all it ain't everybody's business can't nobody tell you whether you saved or not because they don't have the intellect 
intimacy and the relationship with God like you did. I don't care if you didn't cry. Some people don't cry during that experience. I don't care if you didn't feel nothing. Some of you don't have to feel nothing to have a baby. Y'all ain't talking to me. All you got to do is allow the action to take place. Some people will try to judge your salvation on whether you fell out or not. Some people will try to judge your salvation by whether you cried or not. Somebody will try to, it ain't real. Devil, you a liar. Small people have been destroyed because they had people that had the audacity to tell them they won't save when you have no idea if you save yourself. But one thing I do know, the word of God says, I've been born again, not by corruptible seed, but by incorruptible, by the word of God. And I need you to lift your hands and say, devil, take that. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Shout glory in here. Yeah, take that devil. You try to accuse me of my faults, but I know I've been born again. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You got to tell the devil. When the devil comes up and try to say you can't make it, you need to look him in his face and say, but oh devil, I've been born again. I've been washed in the blood. My sins have been forgiven, and I'm on my way. Shout glory in here I've been born again can somebody say I've been born again the same spirit and seed dwells in us Christ being formed in us as we exercise and practice the word of God it is the father's responsibility to give his children access to provide opportunity and keep them covered. Y'all show them, come back next week. Your, your father has three specific roles. Uh -huh. He had to give you opportunity, uh -huh. to cover you and give you access. Uh -huh. he ain't supposed, uh, I got to go from there. It is the children's responsibility. Then let's talk about what they're supposed to be doing to submit to the process that the father has set in place so that at some point point they can access those opportunities go back and get the tape that was a little deep since the fall of Adam man had not known God as father but rather an authority that existed to demand their compliance in Luke 1 17 he said he shall go before him in the spirit and in power of Elias and turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the disobedient uh oh uh oh uh -oh, and the disobedient who is he talking about these knucklehead disobedient kids uh-huh not does the father have to be turned to the children but they're gonna have to turn away from their rebelliousness and their stubbornness and their disregard God for God's authority. Oh, I don't. Uh, in other words, uh, they're gonna have wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Uh, he says they have a role. Uh, in Malachi 4 and 5, behold, I will send Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Uh, you want to know one thing that's gonna be major and a, on a true sign that the world is coming to an end? It is the rebellion in a generation that disregards and disrespects and dishonors God's authority. I shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the, their father lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let me slow down. You hear what he's saying? He ain't say I'm a, he said when, th listen, listen to what he said. I came to turn the hearts of the father back to the children. Then he says, and the heart of the children back to their fathers. He didn't say a good father. He didn't say a father you adored. He said back to the fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, it's very few times I see God ready to curse. Most of the time, he's blessing. And he tells us to choose blessing 
or curse. But in this particular instant, in this particular dynamic, he says when the children rebel against the father and turn wickedly against the father and the heart of the children despise the father, I will smite the whole earth with a curse. That's how serious God is about these relationships that we take for granted and we have despised. John 8 53. I got to go now. Uh, art, uh, art thou greater than our father Abraham? John 8 53. Art thou greater? Now here are the religious leaders asking in contempt a question to Jesus and saying to him are you greater than our father Abraham which is dead and the prophets that are dead whom thou makest thou thyself and Jesus answered if I honor myself if I honor myself you can't honor yourself somebody has to honor you and some of the problems with us as parents and fathers is there's no honor in our house. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to us. There's no honor. He says, I don't honor myself. Honor can only come from and you deserve honor for the people that you sacrifice for. You deserve honor honor for the people that you went without so they could have. You deserve honor for the people you fed even when they didn't deserve it. You deserve honor honor for the sacrifices you made in your life to make sure they could have some level of existence today. You deserve honor. You can't honor yourself and that's what, that's what a lot of fathers are suffering for. There's no honor. Not only is no honor from the children, there's no honor from the spouses. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh -huh. You don't have to like everything but honor is a whole different thing. Respect is a whole different thing. Oh, Y'all ain't gonna talk to I know it's going to get quiet, uh -huh, but some of us, we teach the kids dishonor by undermining the authority of the head of the house. You go behind their back. You don't want them to deal with it. You, let, you try to protect them, and all you're doing is protecting them from becoming who God intended from them to be. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And then you complain about uh, the fact that they're irresponsible, they're lazy, and, 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 you, and they can't succeed in life. You cripple them. You, you crippled them just like Jacob's mother crippled her. She manipulated him and then used him to get what she could. Uh -huh. She caused him to lie and undermine the father so that he could steal the birthright. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me them little manipulative ways. Uh -huh. and yeah, 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 yeah. He said honor. Uh, uh, there's no one in my house that I can't honor myself. It is my father that honoreth me me of whom ye say that he is your God yet ye have not known him. He see y'all know the physical Abram but y'all don't know the God of God the father of fathers. You, 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 you stuck on stupid you are locked into a man uh, that, that had no capacity and got his covenant from God and if it had not been for God you would have been stupid a cast away. He says I, and, and, and you know him not. He says listen you have to be not known him but I know him. I got a relationship with him. Matter of fact I got a relationship that extends beyond the religious relationship you got. I know him personally. I got his DNA y'all. I just don't go to his church. I got his DNA. Uh huh. That's what's wrong with us. We want fathers but we don't got the DNA. Uh huh. We ain't we ain't really got it like we say we do. But I know him and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. He says, should I? Uh, but I know him and I keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see 
see my day. He saw it and was glad. Abraham won't stoop it like y'all. Abraham knew what it meant to have a covenant with God. And even though Abraham was called a friend of God, that was a special category that he observed through the sacrifice of his only son, saying that God, I would rather have a relationship with you than to keep my own son. He honored Abraham because Abraham honored his father. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. He said, you love me, Abraham, more than you love these kids. And that's another thing I want to bring up before I finish. Some of y'all love these kids more than you love God. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. My mom and daddy didn't have that foolishness. They didn't play those games. You were a child. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You gonna act like a child. You gonna talk like a child. And you gonna respect me like a child. Respect me. Now I don't care if you don't think I don't love you. But this backhand is still coming. I don't care if you don't think that I'm a... No, but you going on punishment. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care whether you like me or not. Guess what? I ain't coming down. I'm going to stay your parent as long as you live. Y'all, they're going to hear. Uh-huh. There was a fear in my house, a reverence for my daddy. Y'all, they're going to hear me. A reverence that my mama created through her example. Y'all, they're going to talk to me. She showed us how to have respect and how to have honor in the house. Y'all ain't hearing me. Then said the Jews under him, I got to go now for real. Start the car. I might be in trouble when I leave here. Thou art not yet 50 years old. They asked him, when have you seen Abraham? Jesus said, you don't even understand. Uh, Y'all trying to pull out Abraham. Abraham is an ace, but I got the joker. Y'all ain't hearing me. He says, I want to let you know uh, that I verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. Before Abraham was a thought in the mind of God, you don't even understand. If it wasn't for my permission, you wouldn't even be here. You stuck on Abraham when I'm far beyond Abraham because I am that I am. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Then they took up stones, cast them at him. Listen, listen I got to slow down. Listen, why would you do that? You're supposed to be uh, lovers of God. You, Abraham is your father. But listen, listen, listen to this. And I'm going to try to get out of here. This is so powerful. It make me want to, I don't know what, just. Uh, he says, he says, listen, he says, he says, he says, I am. But notice, notice, they, then they took up stones. Hear this, y'all. Did y'all hear me? I said, are you hearing me? Are y'all online listening to me? He said, I am the offspring of God. And when he said that, watch this, they took up stones and they cast them at him. But Jesus had to hide himself. Did y'all see that? The son of God had to duck and hide and went out of his own temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. May I bring this note to your attention? Isn't it interesting that the religious people don't want you to have an intimate relationship with God? Y'all don't hear me. Notice the contempt of religious leaders for Jesus because he revealed God to be his father while they took pride in their natural relationship to Abraham. Some people got more commitment to their religion do they have a relationship with God my mama went there my mama mama went there your mama mama could have went to hell you going there too in other words they're more caught up in the culture and the religion more than they are relationship oh, y'all not going to hear me they will neglect, neglect their relationship with God to keep the traditions of religion and people they will give up a relationship with God to be honored and sit in high places that have no relevance to who God is. And he understood that they could honor Abraham, but they never knew the God of Abraham. They took pride in the nation that they had become. 
but not the origin of that nation. Don't get so caught up in what you're doing that you forget who gave you the power to do it. That's a dangerous thing. He said, I'll have no other gods before me and certainly no other daddies. They worship their religion and not the God that installed the religion. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. Uh, Matthew 15 and 5 said, but whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited of me and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. He said, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah the prophet say, saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They tried to kill the idea of a heavenly father. Now, the enemy does not want you to ever see God like you need to see him because once you see God for who he really is once you know that God's DNA is inside of you once you understand that God is your father the enemy will attempt to kill every idea of you embracing God as your heavenly father that's why the enemy is fighting you have you ever noticed the devil will come to you and say if God really loved you why would he let you go through this have you ever noticed that the enemy is always trying to put ideas in your head to make you uh, distance from your heavenly father have you ever noticed the enemy will work on you so hard you don't even feel like praying and you'll find yourself if you're not uh, if, if you're not wise you'll find yourself angry with the very God that loves you because you listen to a lie most of the time uh, when the devil tries to blame God for the issues you have in your life if you would stop and go look in the mirror it was not God and it was not the devil you did it oh y'all ain't gonna talk to me but he wants to infiltrate your mind and say if God loves you why did your daddy leave you if God really loved you why did he let you come up in a home where there was no love if God really loved you why did he let you get molested by your uncle he said what well, if God really loved you why didn't he protect you when you should have been protected He'll tell you things because he wants you to rob you of your idea of who God is. Am I preaching to anybody in here? Many of us are on drugs. Many of us are dealing with proclivities in our life because the enemy snuck in and robbed you of what your true identity is and you forgot that God did not come to kill you. He said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He said, the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you don't watch out, the enemy will put it in your mind that God is the reason you lost it and that God is the reason you lost the situation. But I'm here to tell you the devil is is a liar God's word is true and I don't care what it looked like I don't care who left you I don't care who didn't take you you are God's child and just like they tried to kill Jesus he'll try to kill you shout glory in here this is why they tried to kill Jesus in the manger because they did not want him to come into the knowledge of the father this is why the enemy is trying to kill you he's trying to make you turn your back on the church he's trying to make you rebel against his authority he's trying to make you get angry and bitter and rebel Rebellious, because if he can get you to do that, he knows you don't have the power to honor your father. You got to learn how to tell the devil you are a liar. My God is a good God. Do I have anybody here know he's a good God? I don't care what it looked like. You got to be able to tell the devil my God is a good God. He's good 
good in the morning. He's good in the noonday. He's good all day long. Shout glory in hell. Hey, even if you try to take my children, even if you try to take my life, I'm going to do like Job. I'm going to wait right here until my change come. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. We got to learn some sense in here. We got to learn that the enemy is after your relationship. He wants you to turn your back on God. He wants you to give up on God and blame God for the mess you done got yourself in. This is why the enemy fights so hard to keep you out of the kingdom and keep you from a revelation that I am the son of God. If he can rob you of your identity, then he can throw your faith off and he can ultimately destroy you. Touch your, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, ain't going nowhere. I am my daddy's child. I don't care what happened. I got his DNA inside of me. Shout glory in hell. He said, I was in the world and the world was made by him. And every, every world, we knew him not. He came to his own children and they received him not. But many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even those that believe on his name, he said, I came to my children and my children rebelled against me. They turned their back on me. They cast me aside. But I got good news. I got some children that still believe. There's any children in here that still believe. You believe even if you've been disappointed. You believe even though things are going wrong. You believe when things are not going your way. You still believe. I want somebody to lift your hands and tell the devil you tried your best shot but I still I still believe ain't nothing gonna take my confidence God is still in control shout glory in hell he came into the world and the order his children and they did not know him he came to his own children and they rejected him but those that's me those that said I still believe those that say I want to know who my daddy is and those that say I don't need a blood test I got the blood the same blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins is the same blood that runs through me shall glory tell somebody I don't need a blood test the blood still works 2,000 years ago he shed his blood he cleansed me he washed me he made me whole shout glory in hell I don't need no papers I got him in my heart shout glory in hell shout glory in hell Shout glory in here. Shout glory in here. Shout glory in here. I know my father sits high and looks low. I know my daddy, he got my back. Even when I don't like what's happening in my life. Even when it look like God ain't doing me right. Even when it look like all oh, hell is coming against me. Even when it look like uh, everything is upside down. Uh, I got this revelation. Uh, I can go boldly uh, before the throne of grace uh, in my time of need. Uh, my daddy uh, will heal me. Uh, my daddy uh, will forgive me. Uh, my daddy uh, will bless me. Uh, shout glory. Hallelujah.
That's what's wrong with some of us. We don't want to the wrong daddy. We put the wrong expectations on our natural father. We put the wrong expectations on a sugar daddy because that's what most of us want. We want God to be our sugar daddy. He said, no, if I'm going to be your daddy, I got to chastise you. I got to be able to correct you. I got to be able to instruct you. That's what we want. We want sugar daddies. But guess what? When you get connected with your real daddy and when you let your real daddy show you who he is, he'll take away the hate. He'll take away the strife. He'll take away the enemy. He'll take away the jealousy. He'll take away the mess and restore. And restore and restore and redeem and restore what the canker worm and the caterpillar tried to eat he will restore everything the devil tried to steal he will give you more when he gives you the restore he'll give you double for your trouble he's a God that's good all the time shout glory in him And let me say this. You notice that a bastard child, a rebellious child, a disobedient child, a hateful child, a disrespectful child, a dishonorable child will live the rest of their life bitter and blaming everybody else. And they're having you feeling guilty. They'll start talking about what kind of mama you want and what kind of daddy you want and what you didn't do. And you didn't hold my hand and take me to the park. And you didn't cuddle me. The devil is a lie. He didn't cuddle, he didn't cuddle Job. But Job didn't act stupid either. <laughs> he told his wife, you crazy. But the God I serve. <laughs> he said, I don't know what the devil, I want to really, I can't speak in tongue. He said, I don't know what in the devil is going on around here. I, 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 my life is in chaos. But one thing I will not do is dishonor my father. And he stayed true. And God was so blessed. Not because he didn't know. He, he, he was blessed by the honor that Job displayed. Even when he should have been angry. In a in, in natural circumstance, Job would have never served God again. God was so proud that in the midst of his confusion, Job had better sense than to turn and curse God. His wife told him to curse God and die. He said, I shall not. I might curse the day I was born, but I will not curse the one who born me. And those of you that are watching me, on, oh, you ain't heard nothing yet. Boy, I can't wait to get the next son. Oh, I can't wait to get there. Our Father, which is in heaven. And I'm talking to somebody today. Maybe you're visiting for the first time. Maybe you got daddy issues. Maybe there were some terrible things that happened. And I'm not, I'm not, dis, I'm not discounting that you have not had bad experiences in your life. But here's what I want to suggest to you. There are times when God will let your earthly father disappoint you in hopes that you would get closer to your real father. That you would get your strength from the father 
that is the father of spirits. See, your father in the flesh can only take you but so far at his best. But the father of spirits, oh, y'all, that's where your power is at in your spirit. That's, that's where eternity is at, is in your spirit. And if you could reconnect with God and get this junk out of your spirit and cry, Apple Father, my Father. If you just, just think about it like this, y'all. If the Heavenly Father let his own son go through the hell he went through. Father, why have thou forsaken me? If, if it pleased God to bruise his own, who are you? Who are you? We got one father. Eternal father. And Heavenly Father that will never fail us. And he sent Jesus to redeem us. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that bitterness you're holding in your heart is killing you. That rebellious nature in your spirit is destroying nobody but you. I'm talking to some people today. Hear the Holy Ghost. You need to run back home. And get on your knees and ask your parents for forgiveness. Get that mess out of your spirit. Get it out of your heart. Because it's killing you. You do not understand. Whatever your parents did or did not do, they got to answer to God for that. Not, they don't have to answer to you. But one thing you won't answer for is the curse you brought against your life. When you made a decision, you were not going to yield to the authority of God in your life. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be terrible. Your money is never going to prosper. Your career is never going to prosper. Everything you do is going to fail until you honor And the reason why you can't get with God is because you got all this junk blocking you. All this hatred, bitterness. Even people whose fathers are not living and you know you allowed them to leave here and you had mess in your heart. You ought to just do it for your own self and say, Father, I just released that against them. I don't know what they was going through. I don't know what their parents did to them. I don't know what generational evil they were fighting. But Lord, I release them in Jesus' name. And I accept you. Only you can feel that hurt place. Only you can feel that bitterness. And only you can make me whole. And I'm telling you something. Listen to me. Some of you have been crippled all your life and you don't even know why. I'm just giving you that. And the Holy Ghost is revealing to you. Release it. It's the key to your addiction. It's the key to your issues. It's the key to things that you don't even understand that are affecting you and hindering you from the Heavenly Father that's ready to bless you beyond measure. But he can't get the blessings to you because you're blocking them. Because you, you, those, those attitudes are extended upward. You got to deal with it. If you're listening to me, I'm going to pray two prayers this morning. I'm getting out of here. Pray two prayers. I got to go run around the block. I got a musician there. I got to go do some push-ups and run around the track. <laughs> two prayers. First prayers for those that have allowed your history, your experiences, 
Some of you have been molested. Some of you have been raped. Some of you have been abused by people who should have taken care of you. And you held it against God. But God is saying, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. I want you to pray this prayer. Father God, forgive me for my sins and wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that my Father God loved me so much that he sent his only son that I might have a relationship with my heavenly father who loves me, who cares for me, who protects me. Thank you, Father, for coming into my heart, being my savior, being my daddy, being my God. Those of you that backslid, those of you that are having traumas in your life, those of you that are not able to break through in deliverance, the first step in deliverance is always up to you. I never cast the devil out of anybody and delivered anybody who did not first take responsibility. I don't cast demons out of people that want to keep them. You got to let it go. And once you agree to let it go, care how it feel, I release this hatred, I release this hurt, I release this, this trauma that I experienced even in my childhood. You may not feel like anything has happened, but the moment you execute your will and determine that you have forgiven and let it go, and then God can come in and show you real love and show you real joy and show you real peace. Put your life back together again. Give you great relationships that you thought you never could have. Give you things that you never thought would ever come your way. God would do that for you. So right now, let's pray a prayer of forgiveness. Let's start this year off forgiving those that hurt us, those that disappointed us, those that caused us trauma. Yeah, those that, that really did hurt us bad. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Spirit of God, we release them. We forgive them. We release hurt. We release jealousy. We release this trauma and pain, this anger and bitterness that was created because of our trauma. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, our Heavenly Father, we trust you to restore us, to redeem us, and God to give us more than eyes have seen and ears have heard and all the things that have ever entered our hearts, we give you permission. I take up us. We give you permission to blow our minds in 21. We give you permission to spoil us in 21. We give you permission to heal us in 21. We give you permission Otto, to prosper us in the name of Jesus. We know that we serve a father that has everything all abundance and we thank you father that that abundance belongs to your children and we receive it now in Jesus name if you pray those prayers with me put it in the chat line trust God today that 21 decree it and declare it that 21 shall be the year that our minds will be blown that the spirit of God is going to meet us and do in us and for us what we have not seen in days past and did not believe we could see in the days coming. 
You're here today because God has assigned you the inheritance that belongs to his children. I don't know about you, but I'm getting mine. I don't know about you, but I'm getting mine. I ain't letting nothing stop me from having everything God has for me. That's why I praise him when he disappoints me. That's why I praise him when it don't feel like he's with me. That's why I praise him no matter what it feel like because the devil is a lie. And sometimes you got to praise God over your mind. You got to make your mind shut up. Oh, come on, somebody. You got to tell your mind to shut up. I'm going to give him the praise anyway. You got to tell your thoughts, shut up. I'm going to give God the glory. I know what it looked like, but I'm going to praise God and I'm going to honor God and I'm going to love God and God's going to bring me out 